Okay, so let's uh, get going here. Thank you everybody for uh, joining us uh, this evening and good evening. Um, if there's any frontline workers on the call, then a, a big a special thank you to you as well. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Lambros Demos. I'm a broker with Royal LePage, and, and I'm joined this evening by my co-host uh, and colleague, uh, good friend and not your average realtor, Sam Najjar, uh, who is going to introduce our special guest this evening. Sam, take it thank away. Thank you, Lambros. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, and we are thrilled to have with us this evening the lovely and dynamic Monica Eva. Monica is a registered holistic nutritionist, a certified personal trainer, and also an instructor at the Canadian School of Natural Nutrition. Thanks for joining us, Monica. I don't know if you want to say a few words at this point. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. So guys, I am stoked to present tonight on how to boost your immunity. Um, but before we do that, I do understand that there are some things that we got to cover, right? Lambert? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thank you for that, for reminding me. Uh, mm -hmm. We do. Uh, I'm excited about the presentation as well. Uh, so just a couple of uh, housekeeping items here. If you have questions, by all means, we encourage the questions. But please use the Q&A uh, section that's uh, located along the bottom of your screen as opposed to the chat because it's just easier to uh, monitor that way. Uh, feel free to you know post in the chat as well if you just want to uh, chit chat that's what it's for but uh, if you have a specific question then just throw it in the in the Q&A section there and we'll try to get to all the questions tonight. Uh, and then that's it so uh, without further ado Monica floor is yours. All right, so I am just going to share my screen really quickly and we are going to dive right in to how to boost your immunity. Everyone can see my screen okay? I just wanna make sure we're good? Yeah. Awesome. All right, so my name is Monica Eva and I am exactly what Lambros and Sam said, a registered holistic nutritionist, a certified personal trainer, and an instructor at the Canadian School of Natural Nutrition. I really specialize in detoxification, hormonal health, and weight management, but at the end of the day, what really matters is, you know, that you are living in a healthy body. And so what we are going to learn tonight are ways to boost your immunity. And so if you are wondering whether your immune system actually needs a boost or not, these are some of the things that basically um, are key factors or they, they're different uh, things that basically you need to boost your immune system. If you suffer from frequent illness or infection, if you have high stress, right? I know all of us are always super, super stressed. So if you are someone who experiences a lot of stress, then there's a good chance your immune system needs support. If you're a smoker, if you consume alcohol frequently, that is also an indicator that your immune system needs support, um, especially if you lead a sedentary lifestyle. So many of us sit in chairs all day long, right? We don't get a lot of exercise in. Um, perhaps it's poor sleep quality. You're not able to get that sleep in during the night. Maybe you're a night shift worker. If you suffer from seasonal allergies, or just allergies in general, have any skin issues like eczema, psoriasis, rosacea, any sensitivities to the skin, this, these are all symptoms, okay, from your body that your immune system needs support. Um, also, if you frequently consume convenience foods, the processed foods, these are also um, different factors that affect your immune system. So if you have any of these resonate with you, good chance that this is a key indication that your immune system needs support. So you're going to want to listen to the presentation and take really good notes. Um, one thing, or two other things, two other factors that affect your immune system are going to be your age and your genetics. Okay, so the older that someone is, the less, I want to say, your immune system doesn't function maybe as well. So you want to ensure that if you're someone who is a little bit older, that you are supporting your immune system. And when it comes to genetics, I always like to explain it this way, because sometimes people come to me and they say, you know, Monica, I'm just doomed. Like my immune system isn't strong just because of my genetics. This is how I was born. But I'm here to tell you that that isn't necessarily the case. Because if you want to think about genetics in the sense that Genetics are the bullets, 
okay, that are in a gun. So the gun may be loaded, but really there are things that determine whether or not that trigger gets pulled. And those two factors that you have full control over are nutrition and lifestyle. So we're going to dive right into nutrition real quick. So you understand the top nutrients that your body needs in order to boost your immunity. So top of the list, I would say, number one are antioxidants. So antioxidants are what really fuel our cells. Okay. And this is amazing fuel for our cells. So we want to ensure that you are consuming antioxidants every single day. And the easiest way to get the antioxidants in is to consume fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, so, you know, ideally the goal is to have about eight cups of vegetables a day. And I know that sounds like a lot. And based off the polls, like we're not all like quite there yet and that's okay. But what I'm going to say, I'm going to recommend that the goal for you is to include at least one cup of, whether it's fresh fruits or fresh vegetables with every meal. Okay, and the way to do it is eat the colors of the rainbow. So don't be afraid to try something new. Um, so something else that I also recommend to my clients is every time you go grocery shopping, just pick up a new fruit or a new vegetable that you haven't tried before. See if it's something that you might like. Okay, so that is antioxidants. Next food that is really great for the immune system that boosts the immune system are zinc rich foods. So these are found in lean sources of meat. Zinc can also be found in whole grains. So think about rice and the different grains like millet, quinoa. Um, whole grains can also be found in breads, right? Just want to make sure that you're not buying the refined stuff. You want the whole grain there. Uh, fish and seafood are also great sources of zinc. Nuts and seeds are amazing, filled with zinc. Pumpkin seeds actually have a lot of zinc. You just need about a quarter cup of them each day to get your daily zinc intake. Um, and eggs, eggs are also just an easy way to incorporate zinc into your daily diet. Essential fatty acids are another key nutrient that are very important for the immune system. And the reason why is because they fight inflammation. So inflammation is something that circulates in the body. And even though it's a good thing, when we have too much inflammation in the body, it's referred to as chronic inflammation, it can actually um, allow for disease to thrive in the body. So we want to make sure that we are managing our inflammation by eating eat essential fatty acids every day. So awesome food sources of these fatty acids include wild caught fish. So think of like your salmon, all the fatty fish. So salmon, any of the fish that come out of cold water, um, flax, whether that's seeds or oil, great source of EFAs. That's just the essential fatty acid acronym. Walnuts are great. Cabbage, I bet you didn't know that cabbage has essential fatty acids in it, but it does. Um, and as does olive oil. So are any of these foods, foods that you already eat on a daily basis? I'm just putting this question out there. If so, let us know maybe in the Q&A uh, portion so we can kind of, you know, figure out if you guys are eating this stuff already or not, or if this is all brand new for you. Um, but don't be scared to try new things. So that is essential fatty acids. Another really important nutrient is fiber. Fiber keeps us regular, right? It keeps the bowel movements going. So you want to ensure that you are having at least one bowel movement a day that's going to help with your immune, help keep your immune system nice and healthy. And so really great sources of fiber include, we're back to those whole grains, fresh fruits and vegetables, tons of fiber in them, especially when you eat them raw, um, nuts and seeds, flax seeds are very, very high in fiber. So and a lot of us are not eating enough fiber daily, okay? The goal is to have anywhere between 35 to 40 grams of fiber every day. So for people wondering what that looks like, so 35 to 40 grams of fiber would be equivalent to two cups of beans, okay? So I'm not saying you have to eat the two cups of beans, but that two cups of beans equals 35 to 40 grams of fiber daily. 
five cups of berries also is equivalent to 35 to 40 grams of fiber daily. Um, if you were to have three avocados, then that would give you your daily fiber intake uh, or nine apples. So what I recommend is instead of just eating like one of those foods, like having nine apples, let's say, because that's a little crazy, I think, right? What you can do is you can have maybe have an apple, maybe half an avocado, throw that into like a nice salad, uh, include one to two cups of berries throughout the day, and maybe half a cup of beans. And maybe, you know, like a whole grain here or there, and this will help you reach your daily fiber intake. And now I'm going to move into nutrients that you can either eat or you may even want to supplement with, okay? So the key with supplements is that they are supposed to supplement what you're eating. Um, but I do understand that sometimes it's really hard to get the nutrients that we need from food, so therefore we need to supplement. So probiotics are top of the list you want to include them both as a food source and likely as a supplement. Uh, and all probiotics are is they are the healthy bacteria that is found in our gut. So you may have heard a lot of talk recently about probiotics in general. There's a lot of research coming out that really our health is made in our gut. And it's because of these probiotics, these healthy bacteria that keep our immune system nice and strong and healthy. So really great sources of probiotics uh, from food include yogurt. Okay, so I'm going to say this, if you're going to have dairy, make sure it's organic. So organic yogurt, uh, kefir, which is a fermented yogurt, uh, there's sauerkraut, miso. So those are just fermented vegetables. Tempeh, which is a fermented soy. Uh, kimchi, another fermented vegetable. And kombucha. So kombucha might be something that you're not, uh, you, maybe you've never heard of it before, but all it is is a fermented tea. You can buy it at your local health food store, and it's a really nice way to get a healthy probiotic in. But I will say this, watch the sugar content in the drinks, because sometimes, you know, like the sugar outweighs the good, the good stuff. Um, and then when we talk about, when it, when it comes to a probiotic supplement, you want to ensure that it's high quality and you want to ensure that you're having 20 billion CFU. So CFU is just the unit of measurement used to measure the probiotic. So it'll be right on the label. It'll tell you what a dose is. So if it says 10 billion, let's say, make sure you have two of them. Okay. And so that is probiotics. Protein. Protein is another nutrient that is really important that we eat every day. Um, and, you know, a lot of times women do not get enough protein in. And whether you're vegan, vegetarian, whether you eat meat, it's all good, but make sure that you get your daily protein in because protein is what is used to build up your immune cells. Okay, so we need to have our cells nice and strong in order for our immune system to work well. Great sources of protein include lean meats, poultry, like chicken's really good, turkey's awesome, fish, eggs, and then we also have our uh, vegetarian, vegan sources, beans, legumes, nuts and seeds, soy products are fine as well. I always say if you are purchasing soy, look for the non-GMO type of soy. So soy products like tofu, tempeh, and then you can also um, resort back to organic dairy. So milk, yogurt, cheese, all excellent sources of protein. So the goal is to eat anywhere between 20 to 35 grams of protein per meal, okay? You don't want to eat more than 35 grams because your body's not able to actually digest and absorb all that protein. So really, it's just a waste of protein. So 20 to 35 grams is where you want to be at. You likely... Um, may want to supplement with a really good protein powder. There's great ones out on the market, whether it's a whey protein powder, or if you want to go plant-based, there's a ton of plant-based protein powders out there on the market. Um, and to get that 20 to 35 grams of protein per meal, what that looks like is about four ounces of chicken or any type of meat, even if it's fish. And I always like to, you know, no one walks around with like a scale. 
to measure all these foods, but I always say it's the palm of your hand. That is a serving for you and that should be about 20 to 35 grams of protein. Moving on along to B complex. So B vitamins are imperative because they are what essentially run and fuel our body. So we definitely need them. If we want our immune system to be nice and strong and healthy, the B vitamins have to be there, right? Because that's how the body runs. And so really great sources of B vitamins include whole grains. So once again, we're back to the rice, the millet, the quinoa, like all those whole grains, great, great options. Um, chicken, fish, beans and legumes, even avocado has B vitamins in it, nuts and seeds, dark leafy greens. I bet you didn't know that dark leafy greens have a lot of B vitamins in them. Um, so I always recommend that you include all, like a variety of these. And if you are someone who leads a very um, high stress lifestyle, I'm going to recommend that you supplement with a B complex. Because you see, when you're really stressed out, B vitamins are the first vitamin that you're, gets depleted by the body, okay? And so you want to ensure that you have a high quality B complex and you want to ensure that the B complex has higher levels of B5 in it, okay? So don't go out and just buy the B5 because vitamin Bs, they actually work synergistically together. So you have to have the whole vitamin B complex spectrum. Um, and so what you want to look on the label is it'll say, it'll list all the B vitamins, but you want that B5 to be anywhere between 100 to 250 milligrams, okay? And that's just one little dose of that each day. Vitamin D. So this, I want to say, is a vitamin that does not get enough credit for all the work it does. It really helps with supporting the immune system, helping to support all of our immune cells. It's definitely needed to um, produce hormones in the body. Our body runs on hormones, right? And so in order to have a healthy immune system, you want to make sure that you have healthy hormone levels. So this is where vitamin D comes into a very important role. So really good sources of vitamin D include fatty fish, so we're back to like the salmon, anchovy, sardines, airing, great, great sources um, of vitamin D as is liver, egg yolks. So egg yolks have a lot of vitamin D in them. Don't be scared about the cholesterol. I always say eat the whole egg um, and cod liver oil, great sources of vitamin D. And you might also want to supplement with vitamin D. And the Vitamin D Council recommends that adults supplement with at least with about 5,000 IU of vitamin D daily. So IU, once again, is just the unit of measurement of a vitamin D. All right. And so I would say that in the summertime, you might not necessarily need to supplement with vitamin D as much if you're outdoors all the time and you're getting the vitamin D from natural sunlight. But come winter time, if you find that, you know, you're waking up and you're coming home at night and it's super dark and you're not seeing the sunlight, you definitely want to supplement with a good vitamin D supplement. And herbs. I want to talk to you guys about herbs because I feel like maybe we're not using herbs enough, but they are magical and so potent when it comes to boosting the immune system. So really easy herbs that you can start using in your everyday cooking without worrying about, you know, it having any effect on your body are herbs such as rosemary, thyme, oregano, all of these actually have antiviral, antibacterial properties. You can use them in your cooking. You can use them fresh, sprinkle on top after you've completed your, um, your dish, cooking it, right, and you're ready to serve the meal. These are great herbs to be used. And if you really want to give your immune system a boost, some medicinal herbs include echinacea, golden seal, astragalus, and elderberry. So elderberry um, is actually really, really great for individuals that suffer from um, bronchial infections often. So if you're someone who suffers from bronchitis like year after year, elderberry is going to save you. So 
make sure next time you're at the health food store, you grab a little bottle of elderberry syrup and just take that when the seasons are changing. Okay, so you want to take that probably right before winter comes around and around the transi transition into spring. And some other immune boosting foods. So there is a ton of them and I could probably go on for days about the different foods that you can eat that help support the immune system. But I'm just gonna share with you my four favorites. So number one is garlic. Garlic is amazing because it is antibacterial, antiviral, and it really helps promote a very strong, healthy immune system. It's really easy to use. My favorite way is just to use it, uh, to saute it with some dark leafy greens. Um, so you can have like some collards or some Swiss chard or kale, right? Sauteed with a little bit of garlic. It is amazing. Um, ginger is another really great immune boosting food. So ginger is very anti-inflammatory. So remember what I said about inflammation, right? We want to make sure that we're managing it so that we maintain a very strong, healthy immune system. Ginger is one of those foods. So when it comes to ginger, I also like to saute it into like a quick little stir fry if I'm making, you know, a little stir fry for myself. Um, but another thing you can do with ginger too is slice it and steep it as a tea. It's amazing, really helps calm any digestive upsets as well. So it's, it's just really multifaceted. Turmeric, I'm sure you've heard of turmeric, uh, it also has anti-inflammatory properties and it is just a great food that you can use. So you can buy turmeric root and grate it into any of your meals. You can also buy the powder, use it as a seasoning. Um, it's, it actually tastes delicious on chicken and you can also steep it in tea. You can also buy it in its oil tincture form and take it for if you wanted like a stronger anti-inflammatory effect. Um, and lastly, lemon. So lemon might just be one of my favorite immune boosting foods. It is loaded with a ton of vitamin C. And I always recommend to my clients to start their day off with a nice tall glass of lemon water, right? So what you'll do is you'll take half a lemon, squeeze it into a glass, fill it up with water, and start your day like that. Um, it's very detoxifying for the body. Nice boost of vitamin C. Helps with digestion. It's going to really, really help support your immune system as well. And so, you know, I have to share with you that there are things that you need to limit and avoid unfortunately. So I'm not saying you have to cut it out altogether, but you definitely do need to watch the crap that you're eating, okay? <laughs> so I'm talking carbonated drinks, any of the refined sugars, you know, they might be some of your favorites like the candies and the cheesies and chips and whatnot, but they really wear down the immune system. Any artificial foods, so that includes processed foods, convenience foods, um, as well as any foods that you might get through a drive through for the most part. But really, when it comes to sugar, sugar stresses out the body because what it does is it lowers our white blood cell activity. We want our white blood cells to be nice and high because these are the guys that are going to fight off all the pathogens that enter our body, right? So if you are consuming lots of sugar in a day, and like think about it, it's like in the morning you're having... A muffin and then you're having a cookie in the afternoon and maybe you're grabbing a chocolate bar later that is a lot of sugar that you're having it's going to stress out your body and it's going to have a negative effect on on your immune system so i always say you know try to swap those things out for something more healthier um and when it comes to eating processed foods or foods that are overcooked refined maybe they're packaged they also stress out the body and it's go there. They also have a very negative effect on the immune system. So if you are, if you feel a little run down and you feel like you might be coming on to something, try to eliminate the sugar and stay away from the convenience foods because you are going to be doing your body so much good by doing that. Um, and I wanted to touch upon alcohol and caffeine. No one ever likes to hear this, but I promise you it's a lot easier than you think it is to limit your alcohol or caffeine. Okay, but alcohol and caffeine, they 
really stress out your immune system. They wear it down to the point that the immune system cannot function as much. So you might think that, you know, like what's the big deal with having a cup of coffee? And so what I say is this, like one small cup of coffee isn't going to hurt, but if you are relying on caffeine every single day, we need to address that. Okay, for sure. We definitely need to address that. Like you should not feel like you are dependent on caffeine for energy. And same thing with alcohol, right? Like if if that is your way to de-stress, we need to find better ways for you to de-stress. Cannot be alcohol, um, especially if your immunity is a goal of yours. Like you want your immune system to be nice and strong. And so that was all about nutrients. But what about lifestyle, right? Because that is another factor that we have full control over that helps support a healthy immune system. And so I'm just going to discuss a little bit about some of the things that you can incorporate into your everyday life that are going to help support your immune system. So number one on my list is stress management. You gotta manage your stress. Um, and by doing so, you're going to be supporting your immune system. So you don't have to spend hours managing your stress. It's just five minutes every day. And one of my favorite things to do is just to take, just focus on your breath, right? Do practice some deep breathing. So you're gonna inhale through the nose and exhale nice and slow through the mouth. Spend five minutes doing that. Sometimes even just sitting in silence is a great way to de-stress. You know, there's tons of meditation apps out there, maybe doing a yoga class, uh, just even going outside for a walk in nature, really great way to manage your stress. Uh, daily exercise or movement. Very important that we move our bodies every day. So the goal is to spend at least 20 to 30 minutes every day and it doesn't have to be like some crazy gym class or CrossFit or boot camp, right? You don't even have to touch the weights. Going outside for a walk is amazing because when you're moving, everything in your body is moving. And it's going to allow for those white blood cells that fight the different pathogens that enter our body to circulate throughout the entire body. They're not going to remain stagnant in one area, okay? So it's really important that daily movement happens. Good quality sleep is also another um, factor that helps build up the immune system because when we go to sleep that is when our bodies actually go to work that is when cell repair happens cell rejuvenation all the good stuff so making sure that you're getting at least seven to eight hours of sleep a night is important for your immune system Hydrotherapy is something that uh, I teach my clients to do. And all that really is, is alternating between hot and cold water in the shower. So the way that you can practice hydrotherapy is just when you go into the shower, you're going to have your regular shower. So run the water however you like it for about 10 minutes. And then once you are done with the shower, what you can do is you're going to turn water cold for about 30 seconds and then you're going to turn it back warm again for about a minute and you're going to alternate that i would say at least three times and if this sounds like no way am i going to do this because i do not like cold water i'm going to recommend that you just finish your shower with cold water um, because by doing so you are promoting that circulation in your body the blood flowing right the lymphatic system all of that is going to be moving and it's going to help your immune system and the immune cells circulate throughout the entire body um, and finally Ensuring that you're using clean and green home and personal care products, same thing with cosmetics, you want to make sure that the products you're using aren't adding more toxins into your body. So our skin is our largest organ and it absorbs everything that we put on it. So we want to make sure that the things that we're putting on it are actually beneficial for us and they're not adding more toxins into the body because when we when our bodies are able to detoxify and we don't have a buildup of these toxins that is when our immune system works optimally and so when it comes to having a healthy immune system right i want you to think about it as like a big pie basically you need all the pieces 
to kind of fit together. So you can't just focus on a healthy diet or just on managing stress. It's all of these pieces have to come together um, in order for that to happen. So we need to ensure that there's a healthy diet. So like I said, eat the colors of the rainbow, focus more on eating real whole food, stay away from the processed refined things, manage your stress daily, right? Spend five minutes every day managing your stress, ensure you're getting quality sleep, incorporate exercise or daily movement into your day. And like I said, limit those other uh, refined foods, the process, the package stuff. And that, what I, what I actually wanted to say is because I know we're all living in a time where, you know, things are busy. You've got a million and one things on the go. I get that. I completely understand that. But what I want to share with you is that if you don't make time for your health, truly an illness will make the time for you, right? So we don't want to, you know, start looking after our health once it's like too late, so to speak. We want to ensure that the things that we're doing now are supporting it so we don't get to, um, to, the, to that part, right, where illness makes the time for us. And so... I really hope that you've enjoyed this, but I wanted to see if there were any questions that you may have related to your health or wellness, because I would be so happy to answer them. Go ahead, uh, folks, if you do have questions for Monica. Uh, by, by the way, thank you, Monica, for a very um, informative and enlightening presentation. That was awesome. Uh, I know I really took a lot from it, so I hope our audience members did as well. Uh, so go ahead. If anybody has questions, just write them in the Q&A there and uh, we'll, we'll get to them right away. Yeah, I just want to add that it was definitely a very colorful presentation, very informative, <laughs> and uh, uh, definitely made me very hungry, you know, seeing all these <laughs> foods and vegetables and all these other foods. But yeah. great content, Monica. Thank you very much. Thank you. You are so welcome. I was going to say, it's that time of day, right? It's like dinner time for a lot time. of people. Yes. So yeah. yeah. I hope I'm inspiring people to want to have some dark leafy greens for dinner. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. In addition to whatever it is, right? Maybe while we're waiting for questions from the audience, um, I, I certainly have a couple of questions that I'm happy to share. Uh, I'm sure Lambros does as well. Mm -hmm. um, your last slide talked about us living in, in busy times. Uh, I, I think we're not just living in busy times right now. We're living in unprecedented times as well. There's a lot of uncertainty, a lot of anxiety, with the whole COVID situation. Mm -hmm. So it's really hard to be very disciplined. Uh, I guess my question to you is, what can we do to stay, um, to stay healthy during this time? So really, I would say, you know, number one, because I understand there's a lot of stress, right, that's going on. So maybe don't worry so much about cutting things out, but more so supporting your body. So managing that stress, making sure that you are spending at least five minutes every day kind of bringing the body down, calming it, um, because that goes a long way, right? So I would say like if, if you're at the bare minimum where you can't necessarily do all these things that I talked about, at least manage the stress somehow. Um, and with that being said, I actually forgot to mention this, but I have a gift for all of the attendees and it is a beat the stress guide that I've put together. So it has over, it's about 24 ways that you can manage your stress and super easy to do. I'm hoping that everyone finds at least one thing in that guide that's going to help them with managing their stress. Fantastic. And what we'll do is uh, we'll, we'll uh, send you a link to that, uh, to that guide um, when we send the recording out uh, to uh, tomorrow, I guess. Uh, so everybody will, will get it for sure. Thank you, Monica. That's very generous of you. Uh, and on that note, actually, uh, some questions are coming in now. Uh, so Valerie is asking, how do you feel about Gingo Biloba? Well, so my question is this, like why, like why? Because when it comes to taking supplements, I find that sometimes people just take them because they read it in a magazine or they heard. I'm not saying that this is necessarily um, the case, but I am wondering, like, what is the reason for the ginkgo biloba? Like, it would depend. Okay. Because it, it's like, it's a fine supplement to take as long as you know why you're taking it. Maybe Valerie, Valerie if you want to... Yeah, Valerie, if you want to, you know, add to that question, uh, maybe uh, chit chat with Monica, or you can take it offline as well. Uh, or we can uh, put you on uh, speaker if you wanted to uh, to speak as well. Yeah. 
We'll just give um, Valerie a, a minute. Of yeah. Yeah, because ginkgo biloba, so a lot of people take it uh, to help with memory. Like, you know, mm -hmm. students take it a lot of, um, just in general, people take it to help support memory and whatnot. And so mm -hmm. I would say when it comes to like those types of supplements, it's completely fine, but you want to ensure that you're not, you know, taking it for a prolonged period of time. So if it's, yeah. if you've been taking it for about a year, I would say, take a bit of a break, right? Give yourself like one month off of it. Um, but it's completely fine to take. Okay. So while we wait for Valerie to, uh, to add to that discussion, if she wants to, uh, we'll take another question. We've got a question here from Yvonne and Nobel. Uh, thanks for the question, uh, Yvonne. And the question Hi, Yvonne. is, Sorry, I know Yvonne. <laughs> I just want to say Hi, Yvonne. Yvonne. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yvonne has a baby who's six months and is taking formula. And there's vitamin D in it already. Should uh, she give him more vitamin D? Well, see, that depends. So I don't know how much vitamin D is already in that formula, but um, so the I would go according to what the vitamin D council recommends in terms of how much vitamin D to take. And so I don't like. I think for babies, it is about 200 IU of vitamin D a day. Um, and so it would just really depend on how much vitamin D is in that formula to begin with. But typically if, oh, sorry, I was just reading something else. But typically <laughs> um, what I wanted to say with vitamin D when there, when formulas have vitamin D supplemented into it already, it typically um, might already include the daily recommended amount. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. So Val has added to her question here. Uh, we'll just go back to that. Um, she says, uh, I had three children in three and a half years and found that my memory got worse after each child. So right. maybe that's the reason for the ginkgo biloba. Okay. Right? So Valerie, like, so how long, I'm just wondering, I don't know if I can have a conversation with her, but it depends. Like how long have you been taking the ginkgo biloba and, and is it helping? Because if you've been taking it, let's say for three months, and I always say give supplements at least three months to see if there's a benefit. So if you've been taking it for three months and you do not see an improvement, then there is an underlying issue and ginkgo biloba is not going to fix it. You need to address, address things at the root. Mm -hmm. Good cause. Interesting. Val, if, uh, just put your hand up if you want to uh, actually speak so we can, uh, we can get you on the, the uh, mic here if you wanted to. Uh, oh, she, sorry, she just said she hasn't taken it at all. It's, okay. it's, she's just read that it could possibly help with the memory. So yes, it could possibly help. Um, but once again, it's not going to fix like the root cause of this, right? So there's, an, there's a reason why. The, like you're, she's experiencing these issues with her memory. Um, and so it might not necessarily be, ginkgo bobo might not necessarily help it, but if she wants to, she can totally give it a try. <laughs> Excellent. And, uh, yeah, no, no worries, uh, Val. Uh, we, I've got three kids. Uh, Val is, uh, is apologizing for taking a little bit of time to uh, chime in with her uh, comments, but uh, we're, we're all in the same boat. It's all good. Um, and she's thanking you, Monica. So thank You're you. You're so there. welcome, Valerie. There. Uh, Angela Kaburis has a question on dark chocolate. Uh, with 70%, uh, I guess, uh, dark chocolate, uh, she's uh, apparently heard conflicting aspects to, I guess, benefits. Uh, do you have anything to add there? Yeah, so I think dark chocolate is amazing. I mean, who doesn't like dark chocolate? It's so good, um, especially if, right? At, you want it to be at least 70%. Yeah. And, uh, but once again, watch your intake of it because you don't want to necessarily be having dark chocolate every single day. Like one little square is fine if you have it every day, but you don't want to be eating it by the bars, right? Because once again, that's another issue. Like there's a reason why there might be a nutrient deficiency in the body, but dark chocolate in moderation is completely fine. So what, what I've heard about dark chocolate is if pure chocolate itself is, is okay for you, but usually it's combined with other things like sugars, right? So, and that's why we have to limit how much we take. Is that true? Uh, yeah, that's Monica? totally true. And that's why, so with dark chocolate, it just means that there's less of the sugar in it, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But there's definitely like a lot of great um, chocolate bars out on the market. You can probably find them at local health food stores that yeah. don't use refined sugar. They'll use coconut sugar instead. They cost okay. a little bit more, but they're so much healthier for you. Okay. Interesting. Right. 
Okay, and we have um, another question here from Anonymous. Uh, should I supplement with vitamin C? If so, how much? Yeah, so you can totally, like if you feel like you want to give your immune system like an extra little boost, some support, mm -hmm. supplementing with vitamin C is great. Um, and if that is the case, I would say anywhere like 2,000, I, I guess 2,000 milligrams is fine in a day. You don't want to take it all at once though because it can promote loose bowel movements, right? So I don't want to give anyone diarrhea from <laughs> taking vitamin C. So what you want to do is you want to take 1,000 milligrams twice a day, if it's just in general, to support your immune system. Um, and if you are experiencing some sort of illness, a cold, a flu, then you want to bring that up to about 5,000 milligrams, but you want to break it up. So maybe you'll have one, like maybe 1,500 milligrams at a time until you get up, until you reach that 5,000 milligrams. You just want to break it up because you don't want to end up with loose bowels. Right, mm -hmm. right. So um, that's interesting because I, I always start my day off with um, at least one glass of orange juice maybe too. Uh, and then throughout the day, maybe I'll eat some other vitamin C uh, mm -hmm. foods, you know, like tomatoes or what have you, uh, dark leafy greens, etc. So is that enough then for vitamin C or am I... Too little, yeah. too much, or no? I would say that that's enough. So once again, um, or maybe I didn't say this, but basically, food sources of vitamins like you can't really overdose on a vitamin through food. Okay. So food is going to have a different effect than a supplement. A supplement is more concentrated. That's why a supplement is there to mm. supplement the diet, right? Right. Right. Um, and so, in your case, like if you're feeling great and you are incorporating those vitamin C foods every day, you likely don't need to supplement. But okay. if you're someone who struggles with getting that vitamin C and you feel like you're coming on with something and you feel like, okay, I want to support my body, give it that extra boost, then you can totally supplement with vitamin C. Interesting. That's great. Thank you. You're so welcome. We've got another question here from Yvonne uh, about leafy greens. And uh, the question is, if we're making smoothies with leafy greens, do we still get the same benefit as cooking it? Oh, I like this question a lot. So mm -hmm. here's the thing with dark leafy greens. So they are amazing, whether they're cooked or raw. But I will say this. So when you consume, and this goes for all vegetables and fruits, when you consume them raw, they are most potent in vitamins in that state. When you cook them, that is when minerals are very, very high, right? So cooking actually destroys some of the vitamins, but it brings out the minerals. So you want an equal balance of cooked and raw in your diet so that you're getting vitamins and minerals in. Does that make sense? Is, is there an in-between, Monica, like instead of fully cooking and, you know, like versus uh, completely raw, like maybe half cooking? Yeah, so that? sauteing is best, right? If you saute ah. it with a little bit of olive oil, some garlic, toss them in. What about a greens powder? Is that okay to use in, in place of uh, the actual vegetable? Yeah, so greens powders are fine, but at the same time, you don't want to just resort to a greens powder. Mm right? To count right. as your intake of uh, fresh produce each day. Because basically when you consume like the real, like the whole food, so let's just say you have some spinach and you eat it, mm -hmm. your body's able to absorb it better than if you were to have the greens powder. So I'm not saying that like one's better than the other, but you want to ensure that the greens powder is just being used as a supplement, not necessarily as a full replacement. Oh, very cool. All right. Okay. Uh, another question here, uh, Monica, uh, since we're on the subject of uh, vegetables and greens, uh, my kids, uh, they like vegetables, but they're not fans. Mm -hmm. What, or uh, what, what can I do to get them to, or to eat more of uh, the vegetables? So this is, so first of all, hold on, I'm going to say this. Number one, kids are really funny in the sense that they need to be exposed to a food anywhere from 18 to 30 times before they decide whether they actually like it or not, right? So if your kid is saying like, I don't like this broccoli, just keep putting it on their plate. Just say, that's fine. <laughs> it's on your plate. You don't have to eat it, but it has to sit there. Right. Eventually, you know, they'll come to like it. Um, but if your child is really not eating it and you want them to start eating it, I say just 
blended, like puree those veggies into maybe like a tomato sauce, like hide it. They won't even know that they're eating it. Um, you can do that with broccoli, spinach, like so many different uh, vegetables out there, even cauliflower, right? It hides really nicely in a tomato sauce. Very cool. Great tips. Cool. Thank you. You're yeah. welcome. Uh, I have a, more of a, a comment than the question. Um, mm -hmm. when, when you were going through your presentation there, I noticed uh, a few things that, that stood out to me um, because I have a Mediterranean background and I've heard of the Mediterranean diet. I'm not too familiar with it. I'm not an expert by any means, but things like olive oil, oregano, uh, garlic, uh, lemon, that I think those are large parts of the Mediterranean diet. So now, and they, they have, it's considered healthy. Um, and, you know, people in that region tend to be very healthy, live long life. So maybe that's tied in, you think? A hundred percent. And yeah. to be honest with you, I think all of our cultures have these different staple foods that are healthy for us, healthy mm -hmm. for our immune system, right? And they might mm -hmm. not necessarily all be on olive oil, but for instance, yeah. if I take a look at my own culture, my own heritage being yeah. Polish, we yeah. eat a lot of fermented dairy, right? A lot of kefir, a lot of cabbage. Nice. Right? So they're all like all these different foods, they're all sources of the same types of nutrients. So a lot of times it's really nice to kind of go back and eat the foods that our ancestors were eating. Yeah. Right. hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. On the subject of cultures, uh, now that you're mentioning Polish, uh, I know beets are, are big in the Polish culture. Yes. Beets are very big. Anywhere in the, in the presentation. Uh, can you, can you talk a little bit about the benefits of beets and. Uh, yeah, what? for sure. So, I mean, beets full of antioxidants, right? So they fit into category number one. They're part of like, eat the colors of the rainbow. Um, but beets also are very, very detoxifying. They're very great for the liver. So basically, if you're someone who has, you know, relied on maybe a lot of caffeine or a lot of alcohol in the diet, a lot of processed foods, maybe fatty foods, beets are a great way to help in supporting the liver's uh, detoxification pathway. So it's going to help detox your body. Um, and just one little thing that I want to mention about beets is they do turn the color of your stools to like a bright red. So don't be frightened if you have some beets, okay? <laughs> and yeah. It's not blood. It's, it's not, not blood. blood. It's okay. just the coloring yeah. from, the, the, from the beets. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. I thought I'd mention that because I've had clients before say, you told yeah. me to have beets and like next thing you know, there's oh it looks like a bloody stool, but that's oh, not the case. Wow. Okay. No, good thing you mentioned that. Wow. Excellent. Uh, I've got one one last question uh, before we move on on uh, probiotics. Um, I've been uh, drinking a lot of kombucha lately. Uh, I guess the question is twofold: the uh, sugar content and whether it's be best to have it on an empty stomach or or after eating uh, a meal. Yeah, so I would say with kombucha, you do have to watch out for the sugar content because a lot of these drinks that are coming out on the market they're 20 plus grams of sugar, right? And so sugar, we know, suppresses the immune system. So it kind of cancels out the probiotic effect. So here you are having this fermented drink, thinking it's doing you so much good, but you're also consuming the bad with it. So I would say, you know, you want, it, you want the sugar content in the kombucha to definitely be under 15 grams. Like I would say even lower if possible, but you also want it to taste good too, right? So I would say... Under 15 is fine. If it's more than 15, you probably just want to skip it. Um, and with probiotics in general, they it doesn't really matter if you eat it with or if you consume it with food or on an empty stomach. But what you do want to do is um, basically, I would say like with food maybe, if it's a probiotic that you're supplementing, same thing with kombucha. I would probably have it with food and not necessarily on an empty stomach because of the sugar content that's in it. Cause there's likely going to be some sugar. Mm -hmm. Um, but that when it comes to a probiotic supplement, it doesn't matter if it's on an empty stomach or not. But the reason why someone might want to have it with food rather than without is because of something called a prebiotic. So prebiotic is what feeds the probiotic. Okay. So Interesting. just cool. to keep things simple, Prebiotic feeds the probiotic. Can you elaborate, please? Yeah, so prebiotic is just another bacteria that feeds the healthy bacteria. Okay. So prebiotic foods 
vegetables, onions, garlic, like they're filled with prebiotics. Um, and so when you eat those in conjunction with a probiotic, you're just helping the, the probiotics flourish in your body faster, so to speak, oh, right? It's like a catalyst um, in that sense. And so... So they work well together. Is they work you're... very well together. Okay. That's great. Yes. Good to know. Interesting. Yeah, yeah awesome. very interesting. Uh, just uh, before we move on, I just want to give a shout out to Anita because um, I think earlier in the presentation, you asked a question about uh, if people are actually eating these foods or not. And uh, she, um, she said that she is eating these foods. So congrats, Anita. And uh, hello as well. <laughs> Hi, Anita. Um, on the back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Keep at it. Yeah. Seriously. That's great. That's great. Absolutely. Uh, so we have another question from Angela. Uh, are freshwater fish as nutritious as saltwater fish? That's an interesting, great question. So are freshwater fish? Yes, yeah. absolutely. A hundred percent. So things like cod, I guess, or, uh, yeah, they're like, fine. Um, so yeah. I think what I touched base upon in my presentation was about the essential fatty acids. So the fatty fish, mm -hmm. so that's sardines, mackerel, anchovies, salmon, and herring those five fish, they are loaded with healthy fats. Mm -hmm. So I would say, you know, prioritize those if you can, but fish in general, yeah. great sources of protein, still just as healthy. Where does tuna fit in all that? Because I love tuna and I have it maybe, you know, at least two, two three times a week. Yeah. So, I mean, tuna is also a great source of protein. Um, okay. I will say though, you just need to watch the source of the tuna, right? Because there's a lot of issues with um, these fish having high mercury levels mm. and mercury okay. can be very toxic in the body. So you want to ensure that you're not overdoing it. Okay. Um, but pairing, for instance, like a tuna, like a fresh tuna, or even if it's canned, like pairing it with something like parsley or cilantro is a great way to mitigate that mercury. Because okay. parsley, cilantro, they actually, um, they'll pull the, the toxins out of the body naturally yeah okay awesome um perfect so let's switch gears here a little bit uh and talk about exercise uh i know that's dear to my heart as well i have a kinesiology background um and i always try to you know be active in some way uh but there's i guess there's a lot of information out there as well and debate on exercise how much you should be active every day you know and people don't get motivated they say that I can't do that much exercise. So uh, tell us, uh, in your opinion, how, how much exercise should people be getting? I would say daily, every single day, spending 20 to 30 minutes being active. And like I said in my presentation, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to go to a gym or lift weights or run a marathon, go running, go jogging, right? Like, if you don't like mm -hmm. that, that's okay. Find something that you like. Going out for a walk is a really great way to get things moving in the body. Actually, okay. walking is probably my favorite way of exercising, I would say. Nice. Um, but even like dancing, dancing is really fun, right? <laughs> Playing with your kids, like that is a form of exercise because you're moving. So anything sure. to get the yeah. body moving. And, yeah. you know, on days where you feel like, man, I don't even have like 10 minutes to myself. How am I supposed to get a walk in? Schedule it in, like fit it into your lunch. And if it if that doesn't work, then maybe, you know, opt for taking the stairs at places instead of the elevator or the escalator. Yeah. Those yeah. are or, easy ways. Or to park your car a little bit further yeah. instead of right up the, near the front door, exactly. right? Exactly. Uh, right. Yeah. Same thing when with you're shopping. Yeah. When you go shopping. Yeah. I was going to say with your groceries, like yeah. lifting those heavy bags, that's also a form of exercise. So yeah, 100%. just being more conscious about the things that you're doing every day, right? Getting that movement in. Excellent. That's great. That's great. So I don't see any more questions. So um, if anybody has any comments or questions, uh, some thank yous are starting to come in. Peter is saying thank you. That was very informative. Thanks for joining us, Peter. We appreciate it. Thank you, Peter. And Anita says hello. So thanks again to everybody uh, who is on the call tonight. We really appreciate uh, your participation and support. And a uh, big thank you again to Monica for her time and uh, the information that she shared with us uh, tonight. I know I got a lot out of it, I'm sure. And I hope uh, that everyone else here did as well. Uh, and Monica, if you want to throw up your screen again for your contact information one more time, just in case people want to get in touch with you, uh, we can do that. 
Yeah, absolutely. So it's right there. So thank you all so very much. I loved running this little webinar with you. It's been great. Uh, oh. If you guys have any questions, feel free to send me an email. I, I find that that's the best way to get in touch with me at info at monicaeva.com. Fantastic. And uh, yeah, if you guys have any more questions, just send them to, uh, to Monica and uh, she'll be sure to, to get uh, to you. Okay, great. Thanks, Monica. Thanks, everyone. Thank have a good you. night, everybody. Thanks for uh, joining us. Bye. Cheers. Bye-bye.